Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Uh, welcome to the, this new meetup of the Barcelona Java Users Group. Uh, thank you to, for being here again for this amazing meetup that we organize. And thank you, Nacho, to, to do this great introduction to the CDD that I hope uh, for sure we will have a great time with all of your knowledge. So, who are who we are? So we start, we are an enthusiast, tennis, and and some of us Java lovers. So there, we have also coding lovers, and, and so we are open to all kind of lovers <laughs> for the software development. Uh, we are a non-profit open groups with uh, more than one thousand members, and growing up every year. So um, since two thousand twelve. So this is. Uh, an old community, and thanks to these two, two our leaders, uh, Nacho and Jonathan, to do this great job this year. We discuss a lot of technologies. We use uh, Slack mainly for also to help us each other. Of, so if you want to join us, you know, Slack is the best uh, channel of to talk with us. Um, what we do is uh, meetings, uh, well, meetups uh, every every month, and we so we don't you don't have to be an expert to share your knowledge. So we are always enjoy that you collaborate with us and and propose new meetups or you run the meetup. So uh, just do it. So it's uh, it's amazing. And we, yes, if you have doubts, you can share your ideas, you, you want you discover a new library, we, we, we are amazed that you share with us this new technology that maybe some of us will use, we can take a bunch to you, uh, advice to you, etc. Um, here you have uh, the main channels that you can talk with us. May I recommend you Meetup for be uh, stay tuned to the new events that we organize. Also the, 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 the Slack channel or Twitter, also very good to be in, in contact and be aware of the new uh, events. So as I said, we try as much as technology as, as we can. So as the doctor and the hub, we, where we have me, uh, members of the community that are also uh, collaborates with all of these um, open source projects. Yeah, we we love also open source. We organize also the the Java Conf, this great conference where um, that we do this in Barcelona, and where you can find um, uh, other colleagues in our uh, great sector of the software. Where they here, not it's only good the speakers that we have are like amazing speakers that you can talk with John Losh, uh, um, Benka Surabian, Surmenian. Uh, so this is amazing. I completely recommend you that you join on the next conference, the 2021. And well, more than 740 attendees, a lot of speakers, and also it's good the, the breakdowns, you know, where you take coffee, you, you can change the knowledge with other colleagues that other attendees that came to the conference only in a really friend ambient and diversity and amazing well here you have some pictures of the event that the, we did last year by the way close to the beach so you want to spend the holidays here you can also <laughs> do, came to barcelona spend some days with us here and then you enjoy barcelona and the and the city or catalonia and we uh, here our colleagues we are us celebrating that the the well that, that the time that we enjoyed on the conference thank you very much uh, to the netrace that uh, sponsor uh, the zoom and the jet brains that uh, give us every month some license for for the community so join us you as uh, you said uh, as i said on the slack you can contact us or uh, on twitter and today um i have the the honor to present nacho cofield Co Co that thanks to him i changed my career my professional career since i meet him and the community 
and he is a software engineer uh, to do TDD ex um, extreme programming practices. Um, he was uh, working uh, since 2000 uh, from in the Java with the Java language, and uh, he works right now in Dynatrace in this amazing company. And he were also a CTO and a leader of the so leader of the JVM uh, Barcelona uh, Barcelona Java Users Group. Okay, so thank you, Alex, for the introduction, and, and once again, thank you all the people for being here. Uh, so once again, thank you, Alex, for being able to share this introduction. Let me then uh, start sharing my screen. Let's see. Yep. So I hope you can see my presentation now. And uh, so yeah, let's let's go. So yep, the first thing is uh, I have to say thank you, uh, thank you, everybody, for for being here. We are you know in difficult times, but at the same time, I have to say thank you for being. Um, at this time, uh, you know, waiting or wasting your time for this uh, for this, uh, this talk. I hope you will enjoy it. You, you will see a few things, but uh, uh, well, at, at some point, I hope you will you will enjoy. Um, so, why is this session? Basically, is to understand the basics around TDD. I found there are many misconceptions around TDD. Uh, just to be able to understand how it works, mainly to, to be able to write some, some tests at the, at the end, um, starting from the test, to code, let's say, a bit, just to learn if it's possible a few things from your colleague and also just to not run away. So that's, that's the main overall of the idea, just to be able to, to uh, enjoy this session, just uh, understanding a few things, be able to, to then write some code and at least uh, have a great great time. So yes, as, as uh, Alejandro said, I'm, I'm one of the leaders of Barcelona Java User Group and also I'm a, I'm a fan of TDD and, and King Code and yes, uh, right now I'm, I'm working at Dynatech. Um, yeah, nothing more to add. Yeah, yes, um, around the question, please, uh, I think uh, here in, 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 in Zoom you can ask at any time, or you should be able to ask at any time any question, you can raise your hand or, or use the chat or asking questions, um, and and it should be it should be uh, really easy to to ask any particular questions. And also, if you want to ask any other further questions after the session, or you want to propose something for all of us, or introduce yourself in the community, I can invite you to, to basically to join the join the community. So don't hesitate and try to ask any questions at at any time, please. So yeah, uh, the first warning is about, uh, well, everything is covered and based on my personal and own experience. Just to say, is it is not something that uh, I, I will probably, many people can disagree with my opinions, but it is something that I learned during my, my career. So probably I'm wrong and probably I'm doing things in the, in, the correct, uh, in the correct way, but I think it is basically, this is a typical reminder that probably I, I did something uh, incorrect in the past. So this is something that I want to basically put the numbers to all of you. Um, so this is the agenda for today. I will basically try to explain a little bit about the history and why uh, this thing about TDD makes sense, at least my opinion, where the process uh, and rules are all about. These things that we call the good habits, let's say about why we have to do the different things in a different way. Time for questions for sure. And uh, we will, I will try to do a, a, a demonstration, a, a simple, a simple kata, by the way. And then we will, I will explain a little bit for the people that are not um, aware of uh, about what is pair programming and how how the things work in pair programming. And then we will move, if it's possible, to play a little bit and write some code with, with all of us. And if we have time for sure, we will do for the, the third kata. That I, I'm sure that the third kata will we will not be able to make it, but let's try. So let's start with the history. Uh, so this thing about TDD, uh, 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 <laughs> sorry about the microphone, <laughs> that's my fault. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not stopping again. So I will start to make it more, stop more, more, more quiet. Um, so about the history, yes, uh, this is the first time I think that when, when TDD appear, appeared because of this uh, man, uh, Ken Beck, that, uh, at, at around 1994, they, he started to think about how we can um, how we can uh, verify that something was working in the, in the, in the times where the recorded things were, you know, the software were running in byte tape. And the idea was to, you know, r record the things in an input tape and then manually re verify that this tape was uh, recorded what the, what the expected thing, uh, uh, you, you, what, what you expect was there already after running the, the tape again. 
So like, the idea of this match is between what you do and what you expect. It was was done, you know, a long time ago. And it, the first time was done in this in this uh, book that, that was called Introduction to I think it was String Programming Practices. That is from from 1999. And then uh, Ken basically started to have a look deeply, let's say. And then later on, he came right, writing uh, the test drive and development by example. That is probably one of the most famous uh, uh, books around TDD. And it's really, really nice to have a look and, and to, to have an introduction, let's say. I will later on, you have some reference about different books and, and this kind of thing. So why why TDD? Well, the, I have I've been included here different arguments around why it's important or why, in my opinion, it makes sense to apply TDD. And, and the first, it's important to mention that probably you're gonna uh, defect, try to identify the effects early. If you're building the things from the test, probably if you're running your test every single second that you are writing code, probably you're gonna detect uh, errors earlier. And because you will have this kind of safe net about the test, but probably if you're writing tests, main, main of your time should be green. If you have this possibility, then you have kind of a safety net when everything you are doing is covered by test. So everything you are progressing and improving is going to be, let's say, driving by something that is helping you saying, look, man, or look, woman, this is something that is working fine. Let's let's continue in that direction. So this is something that gives you, at least in my, my opinion, gives you more comfortability on what are you doing, how you can progress. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I think that this behaving like this. And this is something a bit different from, from this perspective. Also, in terms of design, let's say, it guides you in a better way how to con a consumer would use your, your, your class, your component, because you are writing, in fact, the test, how you uh, provide, let's say, this component to others. Uh, at the same time, for sure, the tests are living like like live documentation because at the end you're going to change it while you are writing. So this is going to be like live live coding, live documentation. And uh, I, I wrote a few articles that demonstrate that basically you write TDD uh, or you are using a TDD. There are some articles and references that basically uh, mentions that you are gonna uh, likely to introduce less bugs in your code. So it seems that it's a practice combining with another like web programming, continuous integration, etc. That is likely that yeah, your software is gonna be a bit a bit better in terms of having less bugs. And of course, the development at the mid or long term is gonna be lower because of this uh, less number of bugs that you are gonna be uh, writing. So it's like it's like you know, having kind of superpower with, with your writing code. This is something that probably not many of us were aware of it a long time ago, at least in my experience. So how it is, this is something that is super personal, super subjective, but in my opinion, it's like when you're learning to write something, you no, know, you, you learn like uh, um, code a long time ago, probably, I don't know, like me, long time ago, you, you started coding a few things and you destroy some operating system or you basically try to write something on the, screens where the screens were in green so it's like learning in a different way that you will learn already before it's like if you if you have the same sim similar um, comparison with driving a kind of a bike it's like driving a kind of a different bike but it's, it's not exactly like this it's like you have to kind of change your mindset or kind of break your rules because at the end you have to move out of your comfort zone and, and start the things in in opposite way. You, you have to start writing the test and do not go to the production even you will see now the rules. Even you you, you know already how you are gonna uh, continue in that way. So it's like uh, let's put yourself with your or your knowledge in a different position, like probably like this this bicycle that appears on the right hand side. At least this is my my perception. So about the process and rules, let me explain a little bit. Probably many of you know this uh, cycle that is the main cycle around uh, the process, main process around TDD. Let me explain a little bit how it works. That basically starts with, uh, with uh, the process that you have to write the test and see how it fails. So it's important to demonstrate us that this test that we already write uh, is, is not already in green because that's basically what, why we are creating it, right? But at the end, it's like this process starts with a, with, a, with a red test that is basically saying, hey, this is the fault. This is what are you doing. Be careful because this is not working. Okay, then the next step is trying to solve that test in order to pass it to green and, and make the enough code to, to, to make it pass. Just the simple one, the, the simple approach that could help you to write this test to move it from red to green. 
And the next step is that possibly after doing this step, is this something after this step that you are checking already? Yeah. This, this, oh. So after this, is there any question? Please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Um, so, if, is there any anything on this uh, step when you are passing this uh, red to green? Once you have your test in green, so it's solved. So we have already the confirmation that this is uh, this is already working. If there's anything we can do in order to improve the actual code? Is there anything where we can reorganize somehow just to see if the code behaves better or not behaves? Just is it is better how it is related, for example? This is the, the third step. The third step is the refactor one. Once we have the, 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 the test solved, then we can think about, oh, this is a mess. Can we remove this kind of nested list, for example? This is basically, this is the, the main process around TTT. This is not, not so difficult. In fact, it is not so difficult, but master it, I guess it is not, it is not so easy. So, explain in another way, there are some rules that for sure many of you may know uh, this man, that is uh, Robert C. Martin, uh, the guy that wrote, well, Clean Code and uh, other other books. Um, uh, taking, up, taking away, um, uh, the, 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 so related with the process that we described before, these are the main rules that we have to follow at the end. It's like basically re think, you know, why this process that we mentioned before has linked with the code that we have to write. So basically you cannot write production code as we mentioned before, if you don't have a, a test that basically is already failing. So we'd say in other words, you have to first focus on building tests that will help us go and, and, and progress in the production code. So the test is going to be having like a like a power to describe what we want to do. So it's like a, having first set is in test, right? Um, in the same in the same point of view, we have to think about you are not allowed to write any more than a unit test that is sufficient to fail. Say it another way, we have to start writing tests, but we cannot write too much apart from it. So tests should be, you know, as I mentioned before, like first class citizen. So like a, like a, a first order function, right? They have to be really clear on what, what they cover and you have to maintain it as it's as our, our production code. And the last, the last rule, let's say, is about you are not allowed to write uh, more production code than is the enough that is sufficient to pass. This is the, the, the step that we mentioned before, right? The, the green one is, has to be the smallest step that can help us to, to move this red button uh, to, to green one. And so in another way is that don't think about a, an over engineering solution and think about doing the simple thing that can help you to make the test pass, like a, the, the, the principles around JACNI, uh, keys, etc. Okay, so uh, let's continue with the good habits. And uh, yep, so as we know already, we have different good different habits right now than, than before, right? So now we have to you know clean our hands uh, really frequently. And well, even if it was doing it before, probably now it's it makes more sense to do it uh, more frequently. So this is exactly the same thing doing with TDD. We have to take into account some good habits, and I, did, the, I have uh, you know compiled a few of them here. And one of the probably simple things that I use sometimes it is really difficult to stop there, is that you have to write production code only when you have a test that is failing. So depending when you are starting, it's really difficult to understand that you have to follow this, but this is something really important that if you don't have a test that is in, in red, you should not continue working on production code. This is a stupid thing, but uh, you have to think about it that probably you are missing a test that you help, can help you to drive this, this new behavior. Um, at the same time, this is something that probably many of you know that the, the, each test that you wrote probably needs only one reason to fail because if you have more than one reason, it's going to be really difficult to understand why this test is failing on the third assertion and not on the first one. And the other good habit that I, I included here is basically you have to try to understand or write the assertion first. You will see in a minute why. So here, let me share with you a, a, a kind of a I will say template that I normally use when you are writing uh, when you're writing code uh, covered by test. And this is the, the example of a unit test class that I normally try to use uh, in, 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 in the day-to-day -day uh, work. Um, so the first thing is that have you noticed that the, the name of the, the name of the test is not already test. It's ending like shoot. Why this thing is basically because then if you think on this test class as a should class, then you already know what, what all the methods should do. Should 
start doing things. So then with this particular verb, you will start ending, so starting then all the methods will start like with uh, simple actions. Should do whatever, should parse whatever, should return something, should basically help you to drive the name of the dead of the methods later on. And also you describe the expected behavior as the name of the methods, like what do you want to propose what you want to do, basically describing in plain English, then you are going to describe the behavior of the expected uh, component in a, in a better way, in a way that everybody will understand what's happening or which cases are you, are you covering. So the result will be more focused on the business. If you do something like this, probably you will see that the component is already clear what it's covering. It will fail in some conditions, it will work in some conditions, it will return the reason the, the object or the component that you expect to return when something is wrong or is clear so at the end the test will be more clear our test will describe better behavior and then it will be much easier to understand and you don't need for, for, for the people that doesn't know anything about this component probably you don't need to look what's happening internally in case it is failing of course you have to go and, and see and have a look but probably you don't need to go there in, in, into the details if a particular test is failing because probably you know already why the behavior is already there and you only need if you change some behavior probably oh yes this this in this case i completely understand because whatever is happening with you whatever behavior i change that is normal that is only this test is failing so uh, something related with before, uh, related with the with the order I mentioned before. So just just have a look here. The type of uh, of the order uh, of the steps that we normally I, I normally try to follow. So in this case, I of course name the, the class, the test uh, class. Let's say the second thing is to try to describe the the, the name of the test, like uh, the method. Sorry, like this, like like explaining like we explained it before. And the third thing is go and see uh, what what you want to check. So this is. The, one of the things that it's a bit difficult to, to, to practice, but at the end, what you want to see after the, defining the, 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 the name of the test is basically describe what you want, what you expect already. What you will know that when this test is going to be green, this is what you want. And at the end, when in this case we are returning something empty, probably what we want to do is to assert that this state that when we are writing on this step, this line is probably the compiler is going to send me, hey man, this state is doesn't doesn't exist. What what are you doing? No, I mean the compiler will say this is red. This is not wrong. But this is okay. Let's continue and describe the, the expectation that I want and the one that I expect when the test will will let's say full, everything will be uh, ready to run. So in this particular case, I will you know leave the line this line uh, as as a red one because the state is not defined. And then what I'm going to do is going up. Then I will trigger the code, right? Because what, what the, the first thing I have to do is to describing this expectation. Then I can prepare everything to verify what I, what I want. And this is basically triggering the code. Probably I need a class. This calculator, for example, in this case will not be there already, but I can do it by the ID, right? So if I have to do this, then I can create that method and also pass this date. Of course, this is something that the IDE will tell me, look, this date is also not implemented here. I don't understand where this method came from or this variable. Then I, I will create the rest of the thing. This is basically do the setup of the test. In this particular case, for example, I need to mock the repository because I need to pass a repository to this kind of calculator uh, component. And basically with this particular approach, I don't need to uh, when, when I'm doing this job, basically I'm describing first what I want, then I'm trying to run the code, and then I'm fulfilling all the things that I need for this particular test. In this mindset, basically you have to do the way completely different, no? in terms of how, how, how we normally do that, or we, we are doing that in the, in the past. And with this particular approach, you are going to be really clear on what the tests are doing and how you are going to do the, the minimal things that you require. So, at this point, I don't know if there's any questions here. Let me grab some part of meanwhile. Well. Just remember you that if you got, you have questions, you can write on the chat. Yep. Don't be shy. <laughs> so if there are no questions, I can continue. No questions. Yep. Okay. So let's go. Okay, let's, this is the time for the demo. Okay, so um, this is the demo I will go. It is not a really fancy thing, it's the Fizz Bascata. I, I, 
I probably many of you know that kata, but this is something that I will basically this session is about interaction. I will not explain uh, refactoring tips or how you want, but I will show you the thing that I explained and how we can do it, let's say, in a in, in a in a simple way or in a in a one of the ways that you can do. It. So yeah, this is the thing, and basically I want to add here just basically a, a warning that probably you know libing uh, code is something that when the things can go wrong. That this is on, on, on the demo thing. Oh, so this is the other thing that could, could happen wrong. So this basically warning, I'm gonna die like uh, do some like coding and you know, things are can change. So let's go back for a second and I will, I hope you will see my ID. Let me see where's the ID here. Yeah, so let's create a new project. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it in Java. And I don't know, uh, this is the fees patch, right? Uh, so let me see this uh, I guess that you can see my screen uh, correct, right? So is there any question, please, or you cannot see it or something? Please let me know. Um, so now I'm waiting for the gradle thing. And what I'm gonna do right now as, uh, is, as you can see, there is nothing really fancy here. This is the typical project. Um, in, in, in a Java project, let's say. And what I'm gonna do, I wanna start first with this part. It's basically because I don't like this base of dependencies that are by default the ID is suggesting me. And um, and basically what I want to do is to introduce another kind of dependencies. I, I prefer to use another one that basically helps me to, to, to test the things in a, better, in a better way. I introduce different, uh, um, different uh, I would say, uh, uh, libraries, sorry. And uh, the J unit should be, I guess, the same. It is not this one, I guess. Let me see for a second. Uh, so it has to be this one. Sorry, I forgot because I was using the version, the previous version. So let me go back. So as you can see here, this is the unit five version. This is the one that I want. I would like to use. This is the library I normally use for assertions. This is the Mokito that is probably we are not, we are not going to use it right now in the on this demo, but let's let's leave it as it is right now for the for the example. Natural, uh, um, the people is asking if you can increase the size of the font, please. Oh yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, probably the best thing is to do is do it like this, right? Yep. Much better, I guess. No. I hope so. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me have here for a second. I will create the first class here, and for the example, yes. Uh, let me see. I can do it in the in the correct way. And we are in Barcelona, Jack, right? Barcelona, Jack, and let's see if I can do it like this. It was uh, shoot, right? Okay. So the first thing that I forgot. Let me move the controls of Zoom because this is one of the things I don't like it too much. Zoom is always. And um, yes, as you can see, this is the, the package that we already created, and now I have already my my uh, my, my test, my class under test, let's say. And what I want to do right now is to start with the first uh, with the first example. Let's go back for a second for the presentation, and probably what we have to do is print it from one to one hundred. Uh, the best or the the simple thing is start with the one, right? And uh, yeah, basically the one should only print, I guess. Uh, should print one, so we should return one, one, one. No, uh, it's a stupid test, probably yes, but at this point, I think it's enough for the purpose of what we what we want to achieve. And as we mentioned, uh, what I want to do right now is to use the first thing I want to do is to do the assertions, right? Because that the, the first thing I want to do is to describe exactly what we want. So what I want to do is to right now call this bus, let's say, convert. No, because what we want to do is to convert based on the on the on the description that basically is trying to convert depending on the number a result that is converted as a as a, as a number is converted to a possible string. So uh, at this point, what I'm doing is basically describing or designing the class that I want to do and also the signature that I want to to to, to cover. Right. Uh, so right now, I will I will leave it right now as it is. Or, or, or basically to, to see that what I want to do is basically define that this should be equal to the string representation of the number one, right? This is this is exactly what the what the description of the, this particular kata explains. And now what I can do is plus the number one, right? So now uh, still the ID is saying, look, this class uh, I, you have to create it. Okay, let's create it. Not in the test because this is a this has to be where is my mark? 
Uh, I can see my mouse, but um, so basically, I need. Hey, my mouse is not here. Oh, my mouse disappears. So let me see if I can move it manually. <laughs> uh, not here. Man, I want to cover there. Well, let me see for a second. Where's my mouse? Now it appears. Let's see if I can again do it. Okay, now it appears. I don't know what happened with my mouse. See what happens with. So let's do it again. Now, what I want to do instead of doing like, like here, I want to now introduce a, a component that is production from. So this is the, the class that should be right on the production. So here you can see on the left hand side is another. This is another particular, I mean, in, in my opinion, nice uh, tip because basically you can work like this and when you're pairing, your colleague should also see the production code while at the same time you are coding the, the test or vice versa. So this is something really interesting to, to, to do it like this. So in doing that way, I can start, you know, um, with the help of the idea, I will try to describe the, the definition of the test still is not uh, in, in red because basically it is not compiling, right? So now what I want to do is basically finish it and instead of uh, doing nothing more, I will, I will basically leave it as it is and then basically I can run uh, this test to see if it's failing or not. For sure this is failing because I'm running and throwing this exception, okay? Now I'm, I'm, I'm covering the first test, I wrote the test that is in red and then I can move to the next, to the next step. And then the, 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 the rule says that we have to do the minimum thing to make it pass. So probably um, the first thing that the, the, the simple thing that I can do is probably return one uh, as a string, sorry, right? So this is something that then we move to red. Now we, we, we covered the, the, so the problem and move it to, to green. Let me see if it is happening, yes, you can see better, yeah. Um, so now we can we move the, the, the red to green and now we, we can start thinking about uh, we, we can refactor that code probably with the amount of code that we have already on the production side we cannot refactor too much. So let's continue probably with the, with the, another example that could be the, 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 the two. Uh, uh, for the safety I will basically copy it. I don't like to copy things but just give me give me the time for doing it a, a, bit, a bit much faster. But then this this should I, I, if, if you follow me then probably we write a new code, we introduce the number two and the number two is going to fail, right? So how we can solve this probably, well, there are many things how we can, this kata can be solved in a many different ways. But at the same time, uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is basically do we try to do it in the, in the simple uh, or one of the simple uh, ways that could be possibly just check if the number is two, then return the number two converted as a string. Probably you will say, yes, this is going to work, but probably this is not driving us for a particular place that it could be really helpful. Don't worry, this is, a, a, this is an example. I un completely understand your point, but this is a super simple example to see how we can progress. Let's continue and see if this, with this particular approach we can go somewhere else. So in this case, in, in the case of fees, right, this is, this is the scenario when I'm using the number three, right? So in this case, just for, for, the, for the safety of the same thing. What we can do is just copy the same thing, describe this, and see that I'm running again the, all the tests that it should be failing. So basically, this is not, this is not uh, basically um, uh, solved, solve it, right? So let's continue with this approach. And, and, and in, this, in this sense, what we can do is do something similar to this one, right? So let's do it in a similar way. You will, you will stay saying, this guy is doing completely crappy code, but you will see why this is going to help us progressing in a, in a, in a some, some natural way. This is something that we already know. If we introduce the number four, we are going to introduce, let's say, this, the, another condition that is going to help us in the same way adding a new conditional. But in the terms of four or the seven, so the numbers that we already know in terms of the business logic, we, we introduced the, 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 the previous, con the first condition, no? that the, the same numbers should be returned if they are not multiples of three, multiples of five, or multiples of three and five at the same time. So this will say, I would say that they are covered by uh, this uh, example that we have already uh, up here, right? So the one and two, they cover or at, at least part of the numbers that we have, uh, that they have to be uh, multiple of three, multiple of five, multiple of three and five at the same time. So what we can do 
is introduce uh, another test to help us driving in the same in the same direction. One of the one of the ways to doing it is, for example, do the same thing with another multiple of uh, three, like six. Sorry, could be six, right? In this case, uh, we should do the same thing. So, because this is six, uh, this should fail, right? And it's failing. Okay, let's go. Let's go here and try to do the simple thing to solve it. Well, what we can do? Well, one of the things that probably it's easy to do is to check that this is uh, is the is the number three or is the number six. And then this is happening. Then uh, this probably this is going to pass to the to the green one. Okay. And and at this at this point, what we can do is basically move to another condition, another business condition. Because now, if we think about uh, what we can do for the another multiple of three like the nine probably we end up adding a new condition on the line five from production code so here right we will we will we will create a new or here and probably this is not something that we want to do it right now what we to do what we want to do is to have a look and see if we can progress with another business condition like mb5 right so let's do it as, as it is let's do the simple thing and now Supposedly this is failing, right? Why is failing the number? It is it is normal that it's failing because uh, again my mouse disappeared. Well, in presentation mode, these guys uh, I don't know why it's not moving in again. But as you can see here below, uh, the the test that is failing is the number five. So here to continue solving it, some of the funny or simple things that we can do is doing like this. Let's give me a few minutes more of your patience to see how we can progress that. If we do the same thing with another multiple of five, of five that could be 10, for example, we, we will see that this, again, I'm doing is this, this slowly, right? The, all the steps one by one, just write the test. The test is, re, is great, red. And when it's red, then I try to solve it in, in, in moving it to green. Right now, I'm not, I'm not focusing too much in the refactor step, right? But it's something that we can do later on, of course. So let's add this in top of the condition that we have already here. And now, as you can see, all the tests are passing. And I think we have a, an idea more or less of how when we will continue with the multiple of three and the same thing with the multiples of five. But what, what we cannot do right now is to think a little bit uh, more than the multiples of three and multiples of five, because this is a condition that it says that this should be, that we should return FIFA when is multiple of three and five at the same time. That could be in this case. 15. So let's try to do that. And in this case, this should be B slash, right? Let's do it again. And again, this is failing. Well, again, what we can do is to do the simple thing. Just do the uh, condition and return the value, right? So this should be like this. And again, we are just progressing our production code. Again, it's a simple example, you know, but it could help us to drive what we are doing cover by test. And now at some point we can think, okay, man, but what are you doing is not helping us anymore because basically you are not, you are not doing the, 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 the best code that you can here and also here. So there are a lot of keys and there is no really um, funny code that we, I would like to have in, in my production code to maintain. It. Totally agree with you. Now at some point, this is the point that is more difficult to follow probably is that at some point you have to you have to think when is this point when is the, the first time that it helps you to to change this this thing the code that you already have but at, at, at this point now that we have about six to seven uh, tests uh, we, we can we can rely on those tests to make changes this is probably one of the best moments because we have covered many conditions many logic uh, conditions that we have already in the production code and then we can do the same thing uh, 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 running the test of the already so at this point, probably you may notice that here we have multiples of three, we have multiples of five, and here we have the multiples of three and five. So one of the things that we can do basically start is start changing that that, that method, that code, sorry, and make it more uh, maintainable, more clear what it does. So let's try to make it. For example, let's try to um, create a new method that can help us to say if this method is divisible by a particular a particular number. So. Um, uh, yes, so in this place, I think we need to, uh, yes, we need our second number and not at all want to replace that. Let's, let's, let's do it by, by one by one. I want to do only the, the first thing that could be, uh, yes, on the case of, on the, oh, sorry, I forgot that. 
So in the case of three is already here, and also the number three is already there. Uh, three and six, sorry. So what I can do, sorry, uh, is basically go here and uh, where is the cursor? Uh, I don't see the cursor right now. Oh, it disappeared my cursor. Let me see again. Hey. I don't know what happened with my cursor. Let me grab a second. Oh. I don't know what's going on. Oh, now my cursor appears again. Well, IntelliJ, I don't know what is what's 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 doing. Sorry, guys. Um, folks. Um, but we were here, right? We created that method. Sorry about the interruption. Um, but the idea was to try to get rid of those conditions, right? To to see if any particular method that we should have here, it should uh, we should it, it should help us to introduce any particular number that could be divisible by three, and then get rid of all these conditions. So let's try to do it because basically uh, now we introduce basically a new method, and we don't we don't we don't change any behavior. Basically, here should be exactly the same behavior. Uh, Oh yes, basically my fault because basically I didn't I didn't implement that method in this way. As you can see, this 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 test was helping me to say, "Hey man, you forgot to change the behavior of the of this method divisible by three because you already changed something and the multiple by by the, the multiple of uh, three that is six is failing. So now I, what, what is missing is basically the implementation that I, I have to do. That should be instead of this one should be uh, the divisor, right? So this should be something like this. That is basically what we were looking for before and I haven't done finally, right? So basically what we want is to achieve that the number that we are passing has to be divisible by three. And at the same time, I think we can do this exactly the same thing here because if we, we think about it, this, this will be the place where we have to introduce all the numbers that should be divisible by five. So let's try to do it in a simple way. A similar way should be like this, sorry, five, right? So let's run all the tests again, and they are still passing. I think we can do exactly the same thing here, but only with, with not only, but with three and five at the same time. So let's do it like this and see if this is working for us. And, oops, correct one. Uh, it's divisible by number, should be divisible by uh, five. And this will be divisible by three at the same time, right? So all the tests are still passing, what we can do right now is to think about, okay, how is the production code? We are more happy with this code? Yes, I'm more happy with this code, but probably not with this particular last part, right? So one of the things that we can do is to see if these conditions can be somehow uh, summarized in, in, a, in a particular place. So let's, let's do it in another way. Um, let's think about first what we are checking, and basically the rules that we are checking is basically all the numbers that we have should behave in a particular way or another. If there's multiple by three, multiple by five, three and five, or if not, they are gonna return the same number. This is more or less what, what uh, we are doing. What if we try to just summarize all of this in a single method? Because basically here we are passing numbers and giving a, a, a simple uh, result. So uh, one of the things that we can do is to try to do a parameterized test, right? So if we do something like return expected uh, number, um, so uh, basically what we want to do here is to see that the number that we are passing should be the string that we expect, right? This is a parameterized test and, and probably uh, many of you, many of you may, may know that this is exactly what we're going to do is going to be really exactly what we did before, but in a different, uh, in a different, more condensed way, I would say. So what we can do is to say something like this, it has to be equal to the expected uh, result, uh, so expected result, right? Uh, yeah, so this has to be something like this. And in this case, what we want to do is to do exactly the same thing. I mean, in this case, uh, what we can do is to try to introduce the similar test that we already been there because we are not breaking anything, right? In the same case, we can do exactly the same thing with, um, with the test of uh, multiples of three, like three and six, for example. Still is working. Let's try to continue with the number five. 
that should be similar to the number uh, to the number 10 right uh, so let me go back here because probably you cannot see all of this that should be here right these are the tests uh, that we are running already here we can we can name it uh, this name of method that could uh, uh, re return a very result based on the argument that you already hear but uh, i think for the safety of this this uh, of this uh, example it, it, it will be enough but i think it's something that we can use like this name and then use the argument that we can use and make the test more visible in terms of visibility um so doing it that way uh what we can do is to i think we can finalize or, or end up with something like this and instead of doing this bunch of tests that we already covering here, uh, we, we can get rid of all of these because basically all these cases are exactly the ones that we are describing here, a bit less verbose than the other one, right? And the same thing, we can introduce different ones. For example, in this case, the number four. As you can see, we were missing the number four on the, on the scenario that we have here, right? So the number four is failing because the expecting the number uh, so expecting the number one has to be equal to the number. Uh, so this is the case you know, that we are having here. We are always returning number one, depending, no matter the number that we're passing, passing. So one of the things that we can do with this, in this case to solve it is basically get rid of this and return the representation as the string of uh, this number. And in this particular approach, I guess everything should be fine and should be uh, working. So with this particular uh, scenario, we can run different uh, tests with the simple uh, uh, approach that we can see. And also we are, you know, the production code that we have already is a bit more clear on what it does and, and it's more clear on what, what, it, uh, what, it, what is the behavior of all of this. And also it's more or less clear uh, what's the purpose of all of it. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this demo. Let's go back for a second to then to the presentation and let's continue because uh, now I would like to explain a little bit about pair programming because this is something that for the people that doesn't understand or they didn't uh, attend before to a session where pair programming is important. I think it's interesting to explain you a little bit about the, about how, what the pair programming thing and how it works. So pair programming as TVD is one of the, uh, one of the most famous, I would say, pair programming practices. And basically is when two persons and at the same time are focused on the, on the same, on the same problem. So this is basically something similar uh, analogy to this, this picture that appears here when you have a driver that's basically holding the, 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 the devices or the, um, the elements that you have to use for driving in the correct direction, but you have the other one that the other person that is the navigator is saying you, hey, look on this, turn to the right, turn to the left, be careful because this, with this particular project, we have to reduce something. So basically we have two, uh, two roles here. One is the driver that is writing the code while the other, the navigator is basically reviewing what the other one is doing. So one is more focused on the tactical approach, I would say. One is the, the what, we, what we have to do, where we are gonna do, how we, how we are gonna approach the next problem, let's say, but in, in terms of wider, uh, I would say wider view. And the other one is more strategic in terms of, uh, not strategic, I would say more, um, practical in terms of what we are doing. So not focus on more, less or, or length where we are going to go uh, really far away. Just this is the driver. The driver is basically focusing on solving exactly a, a smaller step. The navigator is the one that is helping you to, hey, remember to this part, think about this and, and let's move to, to the rest, to the next, uh, to the next step. So in this uh, scenario, uh, uh, what, what I want to do right now is to explain you how there are different ways of doing pair programming. One of the things, or the most famous, is to do the pair pro ping pong pair programming, and this is something that we we, we can try to do it in uh, today. So in this process, basically, we will have two persons. The first person, let's say, let's call it A, we will, we will be we will be writing a new test and verifies that this test is in fact. Then the, the other uh, the other person will implement the code to pass the test to to green, and then if it's mandatory or is needed, this uh, this same developer will have a look and see if it's possible or is needed to refactor the code. Once once this test is in green and the refactor is done, if it's needed, then the developer will write the next test. If with this particular approach, then we'll pass the control again with the first developer. So with this particular uh, approach, we will do you know someone will start. And the other one will continue and then we are gonna you know move to one to another one to another and with this particular approach you will always you will be looking for the next time that you're gonna uh, write the next test or you're gonna uh, solve the actual uh, problem uh, so basically this is the way of uh, thinking and programming with someone else so 
to, to, don't rush to, to, to be honest. You have to be uh, really calm. Do, do not pressure to, to your colleagues because basically the idea is to grow in the same direction and write some code that can, can, you can be proud of all of you, so all of us, let's say. And yeah, basically try to learn a few things if it's possible with, with your colleagues and have a great, great time. So yeah, so in summary, just be kind and, and respect respect others because now it's time to you know uh, meet meet others and try to um, to work with someone else that probably you didn't do you didn't do before. Uh, so I hope you're ready. Uh, how we are gonna do it? Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be funny. I hope, and it's gonna be really really easy to make it. With with Zoom, we have what we called um, uh, breakout rooms. I created I don't know how to remember how many. But I created about 30 or more breakout rooms based on the number of people that they are attending. Uh, definitely, we will, we will not need uh, this amount of rooms. But in any case, uh, it's completely up to you. You want to practice one kata or another, depending on what you choose. Uh, I think we can vote in the chat in a second uh, because they are completely different in terms of complexity. My first idea of uh, this session, because it's basically an introduction, one of the other uh, simplest or easiest to to start working with the idea and follow all the all the steps and and doing the, the good habit that I mentioned is the Libya kata. The Libya kata is basically uh, focus on what what leap years are and the conditions about when one uh, leap, one year is leap year or not. Basically, they have to be divisible by four, but not four hundred or be friendly, etc. Okay, it's not that difficult, but it's well it takes it takes a bit longer to probably than than like what you normally expect if you don't you don't uh, you have done do it before. And uh, so what I have to do, what I want to do right now is let me see a second what time is. Uh, can you see right now the hour? And the other the other mm, the other approach or the other kata that I, I want to uh, uh, try is, uh, is is this one the string calculator. So it's basically a kind of calculator that you can pass a bunch of numbers and the calculator will accept uh, a format of it and then he will be, return, be able to return the sum of all of these numbers. So uh, because we are already spending one hour, it's completely up to you. If you want to prefer with the simple one, we can start with the linear, but if you want, uh, we can move to the string calculator. So now it's time for you. What do you prefer? You want you would, we can join different rooms. I can assign people to the different rooms and then basically start pairing with uh, with uh, all of you. One of the things that uh, Zoom has, which is great, is that you can ask for the control, the most control of your colleague. So you, if you are writing, for example, and you can turn and uh, say the turn it for the for the uh, the, the person that was uh, driving. Uh, then you can uh, you can basically ask for the remote control and then you will be able to write code in the in your uh, colleague's laptop. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is basically or try to create a new repo and then share your GitHub uh, account and then uh, give the permissions, etc. So it is completely depending up to you. I guess the, the the Zoom one is more faster, but it's completely up to you how we can proceed. So the question is, which kata you prefer, the string calculator one or the uh, leap year one. Depending on, on a view, just please raise your hand or, or yeah, I think it's better to, to explain how we can. If you don't care, basically I will end up here and I will try to assign people to different rooms and then you can start moving it and then start uh, deciding with which kata you prefer. Leap year says for here, calculator for sure, so one on one. <laughs> Okay, it's gonna be difficult. Calculator, say Alvaro. Okay, not too many people are asking, but what I'm gonna do right now, if you don't mind, is just try to assign people that are in random order, I would say, and basically try to, let me see, more programming. Uh, with the connection. Ah, yes, so Jens says that there, there is a, has some problems with the internet connection, and probably it's interesting to do some more, por, more programming. Yes, this is another thing that could could uh, could be could work. And we are not too many people, so probably we can basically move to a particular to any particular room. So now what I'm going to do, by the way, is uh, yeah, calculator. It appears to be calculator one, two, three. So it seems to be that the calculator is going to be the, the the winner. 
So let's go first and try to assign people to different rooms. Uh, I will do it randomly because I don't know many of you. So if you don't mind, for example, I don't know, Alejandro, that you are the first one. Would you like to join, for example, Federico? Yeah, for me, no problem. Okay, so I will, I will basically assign it. You are already in a particular room. You can always switch to the room that you are I assigned it already, and then you can go back or whenever you, you want. So basically, you can start uh, with your colleague, starting to move to the particular room, and then we can go back always, and also you can raise your hand or ask any questions, okay? So that's it. This, this, this is more or less the idea of channels that the Zoom has already. Let me see if I can another person, I can move another person to another room. For example, Jens, I will assign it to the, I don't know, room two. Eudris, if you don't mind, with the room two again. Pedro, I will move you to the room three. Alvaro, uh, to the room three. Hilmer, to the room four. Damian, to the room four. Francesc, I think we are leaving only Francesc and myself. And uh, probably I can I can talk to to Francesc and see if we can continue here. Uh, I probably have to uh, stop in a while the recording. Yeah. So thank you once again. Let's do the small final recap and let's see. If there's yeah, there are some questions here. Elvis was asking if the name of a method test case should be named using the Java convention naming or the BDD convention. So uh, I'm more happy. Uh, explaining what the, the name of the test is, is doing. So the name of the method is explaining something, but also I'm not really sure if the BDD approach is also something really, uh, really related. I mean, in terms of what the, what the behavior describes is probably if you are, for example, trying to implement a parsing, uh, a parser, probably you don't need to explain it in a, in a perfect BDD way. I'm thinking about Gherkin and all these kind of things. But in, in terms of what you are describing the behavior of this particular parsing that is doing in a particular way, then I, I completely agree. I prefer to explain how the, the method is described, the behavior and how it's behaving. So it's behaving correctly in one scenario, it's behaving incorrectly in any other cases. That's more or less what I, what I normally do. So going back to the presentation, you're welcome. And going back to the presentation, let me close uh, the, the, the session for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy, by the way. But uh, let me close uh, with a few references. So there's a, there are a lot of books, a lot of content. You can, in fact, you can have a look on YouTube, on Google, and you will find tons of content around Java, around, uh, sorry, TDD, and, and in different languages. What I can do is basically, depending on, on what I'm looking for, is depending on uh, having a look on one or another. So I will start, for example, with the articles around basic content around testing uh, doubles, etc., with Martin Fowler, that is basically one of the most famous uh, uh, software engineers in the world that has a lot of experience working with software. And also he wrote uh, many books, but uh, based on these concepts around test doubles, etc., I think it's important to take into account. And uh, also there are a lot of uh, practices and, and, and videos that you can find on the internet. So when you have a look on, on the internet, you will see a lot of things. And based on the times that we are right now in the summer, I will recommend you to have a look on some of these books. Uh, for, for your understanding, probably the first one, extreme programming explaining, is not focused on TDD, it's focused more on extreme programming practices. So you will see a, a different, uh, let's say, overall idea of why extreme programming is interesting in terms of the different delivering practices that are related with this. The next one, the art of unit testing, is more <clears throat> focused on why uh, you have to build a particular class under test and how to, to do it is not always, it is not 100% focused on TV. It is more focused on why it's important that the unit test should be, uh, should be really concise, what the assertions are, et cetera, et cetera. It's really easy to read, by the way. Uh, the test driving development by, by GameBank is probably one of the most famous one around TTV. It is a bit simplistic, I would say, in terms of it's explaining the, the, the what is happening in the real happy or I would say simple simple solution or the simple scenario so probably it could be a bit easy for for all of you uh, 
And the last one is the test ride development. It's more a practical guide than anything else. And I like it very much because it's more focused on real examples that you can see with the graphical user interfaces with, in the, with parsings uh, that are real, uh, real code. So it's more related with uh, examples in Java or in object-oriented programming that you can basically uh, have a more clear idea on how to make the TDD happening on real or more real production code. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of uh, content, as I mentioned, in YouTube. For example, Jim Shore has a uh, huge amount of videos around JavaScript practices in TDD, and Jason Woman has uh, another subset of videos around Java and TDD. So uh, I would like to do a final recap with all of you. So we want to share something. I think this is the time. Basically, if you learn something, if you was somehow useful, if you enjoy the session, or if not, and it was uh, funny or not, just basically to know if basically you would like to, to do something else, so or if you would like to have another, probably more advanced session, I'm really happy to, to think about how we can organize a different one to make it more, more say, different than this one and, and progress in another, or cover other, other, other topics probably. So yeah, don't know if any of you want to share something. If not, you can do it later on in, in, in private if you want. But uh, yeah, I would like to know it basically. Did you enjoy something? Did you like it or not? Yeah, Francis, say, yeah, thank you. Great job. Thank you, Francis, for attending. What about the rest? Did you did you like it? Uh, for example, yeah, enjoy. Thank you, Jens or Alejandro. Yeah, thank you very much. Are you welcome? Miguel, Miguel arrived already here. So thank you very much to all of you, by the way. Um, uh, just my, my, my last words before giving the thank you, just basically you can contact me by Twitter, by LinkedIn, whatever, or, or by email. And also I would like to just uh, point if you can, just go to that link please and, and see if it's possible to write a few, just two comments, uh, if, it, if it was useful for you, how I can improve and and yeah, pretty much about, this was the session and uh, yeah, uh, I think it's pretty, pretty much. So let me copy that file or that link uh, later on and thank you very much, that's, that's the, the ending of the session so i guess i guess we can stop here i don't know if you know if you want to do anything else well thank you very much nacho good job and um, remember the people, if they want to be in contact with us, they can join us on Slack. Yep. Okay, so thank so you, thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye.